if you look at Kobe Bryant now, he might look a little something like this. <laughs> top of his head <laughs> but about a decade ago he put together the greatest scoring streak in NBA history now before I get into this amazing story that you may or may not know I just wanted to apologize to all my subscribers for my absence I've been really busy with these compacted summer classes so it was just hard to give you guys quality content but now it's over and I'm officially back Stay tuned, Jay. I want to go far. There's no stopping. I see them watching. I see them waiting. One day I swear I'm going to be on the station. Mama, I got to make moves. The last time we watched Kobe on a basketball court, we watched him score 60 points in a season finale. About nine years before that game, he scored 65 points in a game versus the Trailblazers in an overtime showdown. The first of four straight 50 plus games. Now, let me refresh your mind on what was going on in Kobe's career back in 2007. Kobe's team wasn't necessarily stacked. His second best player was a 19 year old Andrew Bynum. Kobe was fresh off a season where he scored 81 points in a game and this year he came in with a new number, number 24 as we all know it. And towards the end of the season in 2007, the Lakers were trying to squeeze into a final playoff spot. So around the time Kobe went off, every single game counted. And the night before Kobe started his remarkable historic streak, the Denver Nuggets blew the Lakers out by 27 points. And the game before that, the Dallas Mavericks blew the Lakers out by 36 points. So Kobe was mad, man. He wanted to win bad. It was clear to say that the Lakers playoff chances were getting slimmer and slimmer. But on March 16th, 2007, Kobe went off for 65 points at Staples. He made 23 out of 39 shots, which included eight three-pointers. 24 of his points were in the fourth quarter, and in a 14-minute span down the stretch, Kobe scored 33 points on 11 for 13 shooting and went five for five from deep to help them beat the Blazers in overtime. I mean, that game, he was just incredible. And after the game, Kobe just calmly said, I'm just happy we won. We needed this one. Next, in his second game, three days later on March 19th, Kobe just calmly dropped a solid 50 points on Kevin Garnett's Timberwolves. And in this game, he was just hot from the jump. He scored 14 points in the first eight minutes. Phil Jackson said his plan was to get Kobe going from the jump instead of a late game heroic like Kobe usually does. But it worked out because they beat the Timberwolves by seven points. And just three days later after that game on March 22nd, Kobe ran into a struggling Memphis team and he dropped a solid 60 point game again, making it three straight games of 50 plus point games. I mean, that he was just making it look easy. If you guys look at the highlights and you look at how he was toying with defenders, he literally made it look like he was playing his little brothers around the park. He was just dominating the NBA and he made it look so easy. In that game, Kobe lit it up for 17 points in the third quarter, helping the Lakers win their third consecutive game. And ironically enough, Paul Gasol, who played for the Grizzlies at the time, scored 35 points and 15 rebounds. So they kind of went back and forth. Uh, maybe that was the game where Kobe was recruiting him for the lead. I, I don't know. I just thought that was pretty ironic. But on the next night, Kobe scored 50 points again, making it history, joining history with Will Chamberlain as the only player to score 50 points or more in four consecutive games. They won the game against the Hornets and Kobe made history. And after the amazing streak was over, after Kobe finally stopped and gave us a break, they basically asked Phil Jackson, what does he think urged Kobe to go so bananas for four straight games? And he basically blamed it on a one game suspension because two games before it started, the streak started, Kobe was suspended for hitting Marco Jarek and Manu Ginobili in the face. And Kobe was mad at David Stern. I mean, he wanted to go bananas and show his payback. 
Kobe's remarkable, historic, iconic, revolutionary, any big word you can give to describe greatness, his streak finally ended on March 25th, 2007 against who else? The Golden State Warriors, where he scored only 43 points. Notice I say only because 43 points, the career high for most, that was like a career low at the time. That's how it felt because he was just dominating. Anything under 50 points felt like, you know, a letdown for Kobe because he was just that great, man. Anything under 50 points was a letdown at that time. But all great things have to come to an end someday. And if you were wondering how Kobe's season ended, he ended the season averaging 35 points and the Lakers were the seventh seed and they actually got up 3-1 against the Phoenix Suns, the second seed of Phoenix Suns with Mike D'Antoni, Steve Nash, and Amari Stoudemire. But unfortunately, they choked away a 3-1 lead Yes, Kobe choked away a 3-1 lead. He had historic moments where he hit game winners and all that stuff, but they couldn't hold on to the lead, and they were out by the first round, so that's how it ended. But that's the story. That's the time Kobe scored 50 points plus in four consecutive games, and what makes that story so amazing to me is it was what was on the line. I mean, the Lakers, they needed wins or they wouldn't have gotten to the playoffs. So Kobe needed to go bananas because his team wasn't responding and they won all four games. It wasn't like he was scoring 50, 60, 70 and they were losing. No, they were winning games while Kobe was just going bananas. So that was the streak. That was the time Kobe scored 50 points in four consecutive games. Um, if you guys like the video, like the video. Uh, if you guys didn't know about this and, you know, I taught you something, make sure you guys let me know in the comments. Maybe some of the younger fans that might have not known about this, so I had to teach them if they didn't. The older fans, I'm pretty sure they probably did. Uh, if you guys like the video, like the video. If you're new, make sure you subscribe. This channel is not just an NBA channel. I have to make that clear. Now that we're moving into the football season, I will be giving you guys NFL content as well because that's my number one, but NBA still will be here, so don't go crazy. Don't unsubscribe. Do all that crazy stuff nba content and nfl content yeah and nfl content coming soon like i said i'm sorry i've been gone for so long school life all that great stuff but i'm so happy to be back in front of this blue yeti mic it feels so good if you guys like the video for the third straight time like the video do all of that great stuff and until next time guys stay, stay to jay mama sita 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 Days to the rodeo last night had me down in the back.